Australian Indigenous Education Foundation is giving secondary school students the chance to attend a city or regional boarding school. In 2010, 100 Indigenous young people will get scholarships. We're supporting the great work being done by those uh, two extraordinary footy codes, the AFL and the NRL, and Quantar, whose uh, outstanding work is instilling confidence and pride in so many young people, as well as honing their life skills and a few footy skills along the way. These uh, very, very important reforms all leverage, all leverage the forceful link between education and high expectations. And of course, we're moving forward in the Indigenous health sector, and I do want to particularly acknowledge Tom Carman's leadership in this area. We've committed over $800 million to tackle smoking, Tom, uh, poor diet, not that I'm saying Tom's a smoker. <laughs> Lack of exercise, of course, the importance of uh, reducing chronic disease. More funding to improve ear, eye and dental health. And in the Northern Territory in particular, we've invested an additional $1.2 billion into services for local communities, and that's all since November 2007. And some of that money has been spent on additional teachers, an additional 140 teachers in the Northern Territory. Extra school nutrition programs, around 7,000 meals have been made and served up to kids in the Northern Territory, and so many of them better off as a result. We're moving the emergency response to a much more sustainable phase empowering Indigenous people to drive solutions for lasting change. <clears throat> I know many of the women here today, uh, I, who I do want to particularly acknowledge as I make these remarks, understand how critical it is that we have a safe environment, environment especially for children and women in Aboriginal communities. And for so many of you, we uh, published uh, just, just last week the Indigenous Family Safety Agenda to help reduce family violence. We've also just announced the first Australian study, community-led, into the prevalence and impact of fetal alcohol spectrum disorder on Indigenous children. We do understand that protecting vulnerable children is one of the most critical responsibilities a government has. As part of the emergency response, of course, we continue to fund more police, night patrols, safe houses. There's been increased funding for police intelligence activities to counter drug trafficking and alcohol abuse. But we're also putting more money into backing communities to put in place strong alcohol controls that they know will work in their own environments. Later this year, we'll also begin our mainstream welfare reforms to fight passive welfare, to protect children and to promote personal responsibility. This is aimed at giving vulnerable Australians, including Indigenous Australians, but not limited to uh, Indigenous people, giving people in these circumstances the financial structure and incentives to take stronger control of their lives. We've rejected the scattergun approach to servicing remote communities. A coordinator general for remote indigenous services, and I'm pretty pleased to see him here this, this evening, is, has been appointed to drive our reforms, to give communities, these communities, access to the level of basic services that other communities of a similar size and similar lo and in other locations expect. Our reforms to employment services are giving more Indigenous people the skills and training they need to get and keep a job. We've seen new employment services uh, starting last year delivering more than 35,000 Indigenous Australians into work. 
and that's been delivered by Job Services Australia. Around 23,000 people started employment or training through the Indigenous Employment Program over the same period, double the previous annual average. And more than 1,500 properly paid jobs have been created in place of the old subsidised work programs under CDP. At the same time, with of course uh, being very, very keen to work in concert with and to harness the great achievements of more and more Australian businesses working with Indigenous people and also doing business with them. It's about creating jobs and also creating business opportunities. We started the very difficult work of transforming the Alice Springs town camps. It is the case that previous governments walked away from the town camps in Alice Springs. But we persevered. We negotiated the deal and we uh, are now seeing the improvements in housing and living conditions in the camps and seeing the improvements in services in Alice Springs. Work is underway and it's giving the 2,000 residents in these town camps a chance at a much, much brighter future. So the list of these reforms is long. There is real momentum on each and every one of these fronts. And after decades of underinvestment, we are seeing real progress. We must also not go backwards on the nationally significant issue of race relations in Australia. We came to government knowing that change was needed on more emotional dimensions as well as practical levels. Reform and investment are important necessary steps, but they are not sufficient to close the gap. The gap is also in mindsets, along with all those statistics that we're so familiar with. The horrifying numbers about life expectancy, health and education, they don't tell the whole story. The hand that history has dealt us has shaped our understanding of ourselves and each other. We recognise the great importance of pride in identity, in shaping aspirations and choices. That's why Federal Labor reversed the former government's position and endorsed the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. It's why we supported the establishment of the National Congress of Australia's First Peoples. We recently nominated an Indigenous woman, Megan Davis, and she was successfully elected to the United Nations Permanent Forum on Indigenous Issues. It's why we supported a healing foundation to uh, address the trauma and grief that arises in communities. And there are people here today who helped us uh, with that, my thank you. It's why we started on a new working partnership with stolen generations to address their key service needs. And why we're improving the process of repatriation of Australian Indigenous remains. It's why we're working to preserve and revive Indigenous languages and support Indigenous me media. And why we also acknowledge that one size does not fit all. We know that Indigenous communities across Australia are not all the same, with different challenges, different opportunities, different aspirations. It's why we support the right of Indigenous people to live on their own country, to create jobs in education, in land management, cultural areas, and emerging industries such as the carbon economy. It's why we're seeking to resolve native title claims through negotiated settlements rather than litigation. And why, in the last parliamentary session, we delivered on our solemn commitment to reinstate the Racial Discrimination Act in the Northern Territory. The suspensions were an ugly blight on Australia's reputation as the land of fair go. They needed to change. And they have.
All these steps help enliven the dignity and responsibility of all Australians.